Now I'm sure most of y'all, especially those of you watching this video, probably already know everything there is to know about this car but there are still a group of people especially the younger generation who have no clue what this car is even i realized this when i found out that my 22 year old colleague who deserved to be whipped had to google what car this is to find out what model is it to find out what it's about so i guess an introduction is still necessary this is an r32 skyline gtr it's owned by someone who was nice enough to let me take care of it for a few days and I figured I might as well share this experience with you. So we're going to take a walk around this car. I'm just going to show you how mint, how immaculate this car is because it's absolutely stock standard and I think you'd be absolutely amazed. So for the sake of... Uh, Jogging everyone's memory, this car was produced between 1989 to about 1994. It was originally produced so that Nissan can take this car and go racing. They only made about a few thousand units of this but because of how good it was, because of all the praises that it got from customers, the media, Nissan ended up building 40,000 plus units of this in its five year lifespan. That's not all about this car. What made this car so special? What made this car the talk of the automotive world in its time? What gave this car its nickname, the Gojira? It's the fact that when it first joined the uh, Japan Touring Car Championship back in 1989, it went on to win 29 consecutive races over the span of uh, four or five years and it won five consecutive championships that is crazy i guess it speaks a lot of this car but let's start with the front it's still got the original signal lights the original front bumper but i'm really appalled by the fact that the previous owner was actually crazy enough to cut off this piece of fin just to fit something like that why why would you cut the original bumper of the skyline gtr is beyond me but everything else up front here is completely standard so over to the side this is where it gets really cool it's still running on the original 16 inch forged rims which are 8j in width uh, offset is et30 you get four port caliper brakes in the front twin port calipers at the back the tire of choice by the current owner seems to be the Michelin PS4 225-50-16 uh, in size. Check out this original badge. Oh, these are the little little details that get to all the purists, the enthusiasts, isn't it? What you're looking at here is the one thing that really makes the GTR pop. And it's this flared wheel arches. And then right at the back here, you have the original spoiler, all the original badges. That seems to be the only thing that has been changed from the uh, original car. Massive exhaust system, sounds absolutely great whether you're driving slowly or really hammering it. But if there are some of you out there, like this lucky owner who is in the financial position to buy something like that, I urge you to go ahead and get it. It's worth every single ringgit, every single cent. And the reactions that you get from this car is just incredible. Now, I've been fortunate enough to drive the 850i this year, the AMG GTR this year. In this though, the reactions that I've gotten, just to tell you a quick story. The other day, I was at a traffic light, windows down. All of a sudden, I heard someone shouting, nice car, bro from the back and I looked over and this guy was just gleaming at me he was pointing at the car giving me thumbs up and I just said thank you uh, I'm glad you like it and he just said of course bro as he turned away welcome aboard the R32 Skyline this is how the cabin looks like because of how square this rear section is 
as a result you get so much headroom and for someone like me who is 180 centimeters tall I can actually be in the back seat there with plenty of leg room decent amounts of knee room and headroom as well it's actually very impressive this is how the instrument cluster looks like you have the fuel gauge the torque split gauge the speedometer the rev meter the oil pressure meter and the water temperature meter over here you get a boost gauge i suppose it's supplementary because you also get a boost meter here uh, oil temperature and also uh, for the battery this is how the air conditioning uh, controls look like very very 90s uh, you get a much more modern uh, head unit now the owner has touched up uh, the car a little bit so you get new upholstery for the handbrake the gear lever and even the seats these are the original seats but they've been re-upholstered with nepa leather same goes to the back as well it's a really really cool interior i mean not only is it really retro it gives a lot of retro vibes um, but it just makes you realize how much more practical um, cabin designs were back in the day check out the rear quarter visibility in this car it's just incredible the first time i had to turn my head to the back to check out the blind spot i was absolutely surprised how much i could see both at the back and in the front Just to give you an idea of just how original and immaculate this car is, check this out. This is the original door seal. It's still intact, the plastic is still in good condition. And then you have the original floor mats with the skyline wood here. Now I feel really bad stepping on the original mat, so I actually went and get one of these cheap rubber mats to just lay over it. What's coolest though, is this. The R wording, I'm not sure if you can see because it's a bit dark. On the clutch pedal and the brake pedal, it's still there. How cool is that? Now I'm sure you guys are done hearing about this car and you want to hear how it sounds upon startup and ultimately how it drives. So, so that noise is coming from up front here. Pop the hood. So, as I've said, this car is completely, completely stock. Except for a few things that I can notice uh, the front strut tower, anti roll bar, you get a few Samco hoses here, aluminium radiator. But aside from that, everything, at least from my knowledge, appears completely stock oh right it's got a works fuel regulator here and that's pretty much it what i really found to be very impressive is the fact that it's still running the original air box and not one of those open pot air filters very very cool for a car this old more than 25 years old it's really nice to see something in this completely unmolested condition
it's completely stock so I did not expect it to have like really stiff suspension but this level of comfort for this level of performance is just surprising now I know it's probably irrelevant for me to share this but cabin insulation is probably not as good as it used to be more than 25 years ago but really who cares when you have so much power
most of the time the car is rear wheel drive but with the Atessa torque split system it can send up to 50% of the torque to the front wheels giving you so much traction and so much confidence to go through the corners and when you lift off the gas my goodness and the pops and bangs from the exhaust I'm not sure if you can hear it it's actually not very loud but when you're in the cabin with the windows up or down you hear it you feel it it's full bodied it's there but it's not in your face it's not shouting for attention like the ones in the Golf GTI these days it's actually not very cool in fact it's very very annoying the throw of the gear is just nice it's not too long not too short that it'll be tricky for you to change gears and every time you change gears you get this very subtle but noticeable blow off valve noise just like the pops and bangs it's very discreet but you know it's there and it's just so satisfying and I'm sure you can tell from my movement and it's not uncomfortable at all how how do I go back to my normal life after this oh, when you're just accelerating out of the corners you can feel the car pushing and pulling you to the corner it's just amazing it's an amazing feeling I can't believe this car is nearly 30 years old I was asked this very question because uh, I've had the 850i and this car literally week after week back to back and friends who have seen both cars they actually asked me would you go for this or the 850i I looked at them and said there's no question there you shouldn't even have to ask me the R32 Skyline any time of the day hands down I mean the 850i is quick and all just like the AMG GTR you know effortless performance but I feel like in those cars you're just a passenger really in this car you're actually you're actually conducting some sort of machinery there's some level of skill required to manage and maneuver the car and I think in modern cars these days most modern cars these days that very special element of driving is uh, lost if not almost non-existent I love my job so much I could have been behind a cubicle at 4 p.m. on a Wednesday evening in my button-up shirt all tucked in into my slacks looking at my laptop have been looking at my laptop for the past eight hours but no I'm in one of motoring's grades perfectly empty road it's just me and the car I am a real lucky man oh yeah before we end the video there's one more thing because these cars are so unattainable by most of us these days we've actually come up with a more affordable means of owning this car check out our new auto bus shop where we have come up with a limited edition line of uh, t-shirts featuring the old Porsche 911 the BMW E30 M3 and this Nissan Skyline R32 GTR. If you'd like to see more videos like that, do let me know in the comment section and I will definitely try to arrange more cars like this for a review. See you next time.